everyone, my name is Savannah, back in Mesa Gardens Zoo today, our franchise series. And in the last episode, if you missed it, we created this exhibit for our little albino warthogs. You might be able to see a little baby running around back there. We'll say hi to him in just a minute. But we completed this side of the exhibit and then off camera in between episodes, if you don't follow me on Twitter, I did share a little update picture. Uh, I started to add on to the other side here for our red river hogs to come back into the zoo since they got kind of displaced with adding the Tasmanian devil over there. Since this is pretty much very similar to this side, I'm just gonna be copying and pasting some things over into here to make a very, very similar exhibit. I figured I might just do that off camera and that way we could get to today's brand new animal. Uh, we're adding the pygmy hippo today. I did do a poll on the community tab of the channel and the pygmy hippo won uh, very easily. So we'll be adding the pygmy hippo in. I'm gonna bring back the menu here cause I'm sure some chaos has been happening while I've been doing this intro. Uh, figuring that our pygmy hippo could be kind of right here maybe uh or if we maybe want to branch off the path this way and put our pygmy hippo over here um i'm not quite sure yet obviously i will have decided by the end of today's episode but we're gonna get working on that during today's time lapse but before that let's look at the notifications that we have we have uh education place too far oh that's because i haven't put the animal there yet you can relax uh, vet research. We have orangutan and Tasmanian devil research done. We should actually, uh, where is the common warthog? Did I pass it? Oh, here we are. We should get you, uh, stop doing that. We should get somebody on common warthog. We should get somebody on our death adder. And I think that'll be good for now. We got a little bit on the Red River Hog. We just want to know a little bit, you know, about all our animals. My goodness, good night. That got really dark really quick. Um, we have a Siamang baby we'll go say hi to. Feeding station cannot be reached. Oh, see, I knew about that. I wish there was a way to just, I'm going to pause this for a second, to just deactivate this and say, like, I only want it as for fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe not, because I kind of like it back over there, but maybe we can put it over here and it'll be usable, I guess. Is that, I mean, that still looks all right, I guess, right? Is that, are they going to stop complaining about that now? They hopefully should. Oh, no, but see, now it's inaccessible. Right there is accessible to the animals. I guess it's not uh, accessible by the keepers. Maybe if we move these rocks, is it? Uh, if we go to our heat map and we go to traversable area, no, that's animal welfare. Uh, where is habitat right here? Traversable area, staff traversable area. Bummer. Okay. What if we scoochie this back a little bit? Oh, there we go. It worked. So that should, okay. That should work then. You should be accessible. We'll leave that. We'll see if that works. Uh, we don't need a quarantine. Thank you very much. Uh, habitat is too small. Oh, because they just had babies, huh? Okay. Uh, well, let's pause this for just a second and let's take a look at our Lar Gibbon and Siamang population here. We'll go to the menu and we'll look at them this way. Let's select species. Let's look at our Lar Gibbons first. So we have... Oh, you have such an interesting name. I just realized. Oh, and I didn't check. Normally I check in between uh, episodes, but I forgot. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with you guys. Dang it. Nothing. Okay. Back to our Lar Gibbon. So we have our female, our male, and then we have their babies, right? Who are you related to? Your parents are unknown, but you have two children. So we have Dusty and a gun a gung <laughs> i don't know how to say that one i'm sorry uh dusty and the other one is what we'll just say what are their um genetic makeup not super great not super great okay well uh 
Um, we definitely do not want to get rid of you because you're colored. So what I'm thinking is that maybe we make, let's get rid of this G1. I don't know where that came from. Uh, we'll make, uh, Gan Ganadi, Ganadi, our male. Of course, if you have any name suggestions, please let me know because that is not something that needs to stay. And then maybe Mr. Banana here does not have very good genes. So maybe we'll just say he is getting transferred to a different facility, which is something that definitely happens to maintain genetic diversity within zoological populations. You have to do some level of transferring. So we will uh, move to the trade center because then from there, is that where you quick trade him? I mean, I guess we could... Oh, I guess we could release him to the wild. If I hit play, that might help. In the trade center. And then, yeah, and then we'll quick trade. So he is getting taken to a different facility. There we go. And then now we will have... Now we will have this guy here and this girl here. Let's check their mates uh right now bonding status wait hold on stud book where do we compare mates again aha here we go so you and you so they do they have a really good chance at creating better genes she's pregnant right now so obviously that's why this is uh um go freaking out a little bit but that's okay once that is all done that is perfect okay so there is our lar gibbons and the baby shouldn't play too big of a role in this and then once uh he grows up we will trade him out as well hoping for some colored babies and let's look at our siamangs how many do we have so we have a few you're still a juvenile so tarzan here would really be our only option for trading out and he doesn't have that great of genes. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's... Oh, you have much better genes. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing with Tarzan. Although, Tarzan, let's say... How many conservation credits did we get if we released you to the wild? Yeah, let's release him to the wild. He's young, he's fit, he'll go out into the wild. So hopefully that will make a difference in their space. Okay, great. So now they have, now they have enough space. Okay, perfect. I'm glad I got that done and out of the way. Do we have any of these or they're just new? No, okay, we don't have any of those. Tarzan's been traded out of the zoo. That's the same education thingy, blah, blah, blah. And you know what? Um... No, I'm not going to do that. I was going to place the Red River Hogs, but for now, let's just... Can I, like, say none? Yeah, there we go. For now, none. Okay. So, I think that was really all the managing that I wanted to do. I'm thinking we'll jump into the time lapse because I kind of want to get that out of the way quickly so that after the time lapse we'll come back and we can implement i want to place down our jeep ride start so that we can kind of get an idea on where that's going to be maybe i'll place it down during the time lapse and we just won't do any decorating or anything like that with it um, but that way i just know where it's going to go and then i also want to place down some keeper talking points but I think we'll do that after the time lapse is over. So let's go ahead and fix the lighting. For those of you that don't know this trick, if you just go in to create a new blueprint, select custom hour. I always do 12 or 13, sometime in the middle of the day. And then you don't save the blueprint and you just exit out. Voila, lighting is fixed and beautiful and ready for a time lapse. So let's jump right in. So I'm actually starting the time lapse a little bit after I actually started building. You might be able to tell by some of the coloration on the ground, but this is my second attempt at this sunken down water viewing area because the original one that I made, I actually made it a little bit more on a diagonal slant following the path. 
And then I didn't leave myself enough room for an actual path. It was gonna be really tiny and have this really like steep slope to it. And I really wanted it to be much more gradual. I'm still not entirely pleased with the fact that I had to add such a skinny path, given how much we are struggling in this project with traffic jams and things like that. But I'm hoping that because it is only one of a couple viewing areas that we end up having for this exhibit, that it won't be too bad. Famous last words, right? I say that and then it becomes a major problem, but hopefully Fingers crossed this one won't actually be a problem. But this is going to be the underwater viewing area, obviously. So there's swimming area uh, behind the glass. We're gonna work on a little shelter, like pergola sunshade thingy. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. I got a chance to use some of the new building pieces from the most recent Oceania pack. And I'm really, I'm really excited to actually build some sort of like structure that goes along with an exhibit. Um, we did that a little bit in the last episode as well with the warthogs, but building structures and buildings and things like that. I'm wanting to kind of implement more of those throughout this project so that all of our exhibits aren't just, you know, nature planted landscaping. I mean, don't get me wrong. Those are kind of my favorite, but I also want to make sure that this looks like a well put together, you know, zoo project. So that's what we're working on here. Made a little bit of a deck. I still do need to go through and place down some um, curbs and things. Because as you can see, the pathing underneath this viewing area is much bigger than the actual space the guests can walk is. And so I need to go down and put curbs and make sure that they don't end up like walking through rocks and other scenery and stuff like that. Um, we still need to put like education down here in trash cans and spoiler alert, I 100% forget to do that at the end of this episode. I get very distracted by some other things which all needed to be done and it's great, but we definitely don't finish this exhibit. So. There will definitely be a part two to this exhibit. And I opted to do a part two one because I didn't want to rush myself. You know, I want to take my time. I'm enjoying building and I want things to turn out and look as pretty as they can be. Um, but I also don't want the episodes to be like two hours long. Like this one right now, as it stands, is sitting at about 43 minutes, which is on the longer side of what I like to have these uh, episodes be. Now, I do always aim for about 30 minutes and I end up almost always going over. But then if I aim for 45 minutes, I'll end up making them an hour, so on and so forth. So I really try to limit myself to about 30 minutes. And I feel like that's a good amount of time, like a really bite size, you know, episode where you don't have to commit uh, a really long time. You can kind of sit down while you're having lunch or, or eating a snack or just relaxing. You know, food's always on my mind. So that's what I go to. I eat and watch YouTube videos is what I do in my free time. But you don't have to be like me. You don't have to eat while you watch this. Anyway, making sure that it just stays kind of compact and we get things done. It's a good mixture of actually building and also playing the game. So hopefully that works for all of you. But I'm really happy with how this little pergola uh, comes together. I obviously am using a reference picture. I got some inspiration, but I love using the new Oceania. This is like the door. And you might have seen that I just flipped it upside down to get rid of the handle and then doubled it because it has a really cool wood texture. And then so do the pillars and then the rope that fits around the pillars. I just love all of it. I love of the tone and I feel like it really meshes very well with a lot of the Australia pieces, which are the planks that I'm using as the flooring for people to walk through. Now, another thing you'll notice is that we don't do too much landscaping in this first part, just uh, FYI, but also the little bit that we do, I start to implement some more kind of tropical looking plants. This is still obviously a desert zoo and a desert project, but just keeping in mind that, you know, irrigation exists, uh, care for plants exist, so we don't have to just stick with the plants that would be naturally found in this biome or in this environment. So this is going to be an exhibit that would be very costly when it comes to uh, watering 
doing irrigation. Obviously, filtration and stuff for the pond is going to be very expensive as well. I don't get to any detailing as far as concreting the diving space or the swimming space. or Basically, we don't do any of the interior of the exhibit this time. I really kind of get this viewing gallery all put together. And then I work a little bit on the um, support area, the uh, the building that goes back behind this. We obviously get it all kind of um, fenced in and a whole barrier border put together so that our hippos don't just escape. But I don't do anything as far as just decorating or any pretty stuff. I basically just throw out some enrichment so that they're happy, their welfare is met, and we won't attract protesters, and then call it a day. And that way we have something to do on uh you know episode two or part two of this build so let me know of course as always how you think it turned out and any suggestions uh for what we can do going forward my first question for you about this exhibit specifically is that uh pygmy hippos do have an interspecies enrichment with the red river hog if you've been following the series along you'll know that red river hogs were originally where we have the tasmanian devil now and i kind of kicked them out because i felt like the tasmanian devil would fit really well where that exhibit was and kind of be a good segue into what's going to be like our oceania section of the zoo. So we have red river hogs in storage and my plan was to put them next to the warthogs, um, but we also could put something else next to them. Maybe a smaller hoofstock species. We could put a gazelle or maybe the gemsbok or something like that. Uh, and it doesn't have to be red river hogs. So I was thinking that potentially as we're building this and in part two, we could always try to adapt it and put the Red River Hog in with the Pygmy Hippo. So let me know what you think about that. We, as of now, we only have one mixed, no, we don't. That is 100% a lie. We have two mixed species exhibits. We have the Aardvark and the Meerkat, and then we also have the Siaming and the Lar Gibbon. So it's not that we don't have any mixed species habitats, but I also think that it would, it would be fun Fun. Um, and you know, the pygmy hippos end up, they have welfare that is good enough. They're happy. It's not going to attract protesters or anything like that, but they are not at a hundred percent on their welfare. So adding an interspecies bonus, uh, can just help kind of boost their enrichment a little bit and just make them that much happier. So, so yeah, so do let me know down in the comment section below what your thoughts and feelings on that one are, because I could honestly go either way. Um, I could could put the Red River Hogs where we were planning to put them next to our Warthogs, have them share the same building, all that same plan that we talked about in the beginning of this episode. Um, but because I'm also not completely done with that exhibit, I'm also 100% open to adapting it for a different species altogether and just bringing in somebody else. So definitely let me let me know. Uh, the other thing that I say that I'm going to do and I lied and we're not going to do is the educator talks or like the tours or whatever they're called. I forget. I do want to implement them in this zoo, but in the beginning of the video, I said uh, that after the time lapse, we were going to try to do that. And I get far too distracted and start doing other things. And we 100% run out of time. So I will do my very best to remember that. I'm actually thinking that next episode might be a little bit more of a maintenance episode, something to implement those educational tours to get education signs in, trash cans, benches, maybe just an episode to pay attention to the guests a little bit. We are, of course, playing franchise, so I want to make sure that we're obviously playing the game and keeping guests happy in the zoo. So I'm thinking that in between the pygmy hippo build, uh, or maybe we'll do a little bit of real-time landscaping along with a maintenance episode. Um, maybe we'll do that. That sounds like it could be fun. Um, something that's about 35 minutes or so long, and it's just me playing the game for 35 minutes, chatting and hanging out. Um, I am wanting to focus a little bit more on like slow play, long form content here on the channel that kind of goes along with that like cozy gaming vibe um, that Planet Zoo could absolutely be. So I think that fits in uh, really well. But yeah, that would be my, I guess my second question, a really long way of asking you, what do you think about that? Uh, that 
next episode would be a little bit more of a maintenance because I feel like, and this happens in most of my franchise projects where I get carried away with adding an animal every episode and I tend to leave things a little unfinished. I mean, just take a look at our orangutan exhibit in this project. Uh, the poor forgotten exhibit that I have not been back to and I said I would be. Um, and then we completely don't really focus on the guests, which is, I mean, it's honestly, it's how I play because I'm such an animal person. I'm always focused on the animals and I play Planet Zoo for the animals. But when we're playing franchise, we do need to remember that we have guests in the park and we need to keep them happy as well. Um, also, not to mention the fact that we're on episode like 10 or something like that of the series. And I haven't touched the entrance uh, even a little bit. <laughs> like at all it looks very very sad so eventually we'll do that as well um but i'm kind of putting it off because i'm kind of just treating this project as i've stated many times before as what i'm inspired to do when i'm inspired to do it and so hopefully you're enjoying uh the little ride that that's taking you guys on because i'm really enjoying it as well um i think i'm gonna try to jump right into the next episode potentially uh shortly after this goes live so i will have some comments and feedbacks and things um but i probably won't have everything just because those tend to you know roll in over the first few days or so that the episode goes live so if you do comment after the first couple days i apologize if i missed it but i still go back and read those and i will still try to implement anything that is suggested in future episodes it just might not make the very next episode so here just finishing up the barrier basically i've switched my brain to making sure that these guys can't escape and just kind of finishing up the borders of the exhibit making sure that there's walls i also do fail and as soon as i hit play on this one of the hippos makes a uh straight beeline for escaping we do stop them they do not escape but uh i tried my best to make it sure make sure that they were contained and i i failed one of the hippos found uh, found the gap in in the barrier um, and just headed straight for it. But yeah, anyway, let's jump back over to real time. And just like that, we have some pygmy hippos. So as you might have seen, if you follow me on Twitter or I think I posted it in Discord, maybe not. Regardless, I posted it on Twitter. We have three pygmy hippos and I actually opted to bring them over from Tolly Zoo. So if I bring our menu back here, you'll see they're already labeled and everything, which is beautiful because I use the same labeling uh, as I did in Tolly Zoo as I do here. So we have our male uh, pygmy hippo, our female and a little baby. And what I actually forgot to check is if yeah, so this is actually their baby. I do have a few baby uh, pygmy hippos in storage, and it looks like my thought was to keep this one, but I may rotate them through, have them grow up, and then release them to the wild uh, or something like that, just so that we don't have so many in storage. But I opted to have three just because this exhibit was getting a little big. And as always, it's on the small side even. So I wanted to make sure that they all fit. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pause it very quickly and just double check welfare here. Um, so social's not very good. Why? Is it really because of just that space? How much space do they actually have? Oh... Dang it. <laughs> I forgot about the water space. Now, question, if we make it deeper, does that count or is it just like pure square footage in space? I guess we're going to find out. So let's move all of these guys over to the back just so that they're out of the way. I'm so mad I forgot about the water and I even made it smaller too. Uh, cause it was bigger and I didn't like how big it was. And now I'm going to have to make it bigger again. Ugh, it's all right. At least this water is somewhat easy to work with in that it places and gets removed very easily. So what if we bring this over pretty much up to this viewing area i'm thinking and then we smooth all this out and that should count right because it's just swimming area navigable navigable 
navigatable. Why is that word so difficult for me? Navigatable. There we go. I know that's not how it's uh, pronounced, but that's how I'm going to say it. Uh, swimming area. So not not deep water, just water. So hopefully, I mean, we kind of needed to double its size and I don't think that that is going to fix it, but at least maybe it'll get it closer so it's not quite in the red. Yeah. Okay. So then that's better. 50% right. And then if we just fix this enrichment, that should bring us, that should bring us up. So let me get out of this and go to habitat. I'm going to pause it again. That way they don't get too, too upset. Go to species and pygmy hippo. And I know that I could type it in, but I like doing it this way. And I only say that because people remind me every single time. That's all right. Uh, we are going to give them, I don't, I mean, I guess we, we could probably make this work as far as in the, in the landscaping. If we put that somewhere like here, maybe we can always try to move that around, but I like the idea of kind of implementing that. I, I have a problem with these trees because I don't necessarily like the green color, but obviously it's better than this one. So let's see if we can make that work and look nice. I don't really want to do a mud bath just because I feel like I decorate them all the same way. And it's rather big and I'd have to kind of fit it like back over here in the back somewhere. I mean, I guess I... <sighs> I guess I could. I need to move that barrier uh, a little bit so that I can actually fit it. Let's just see how realistically I can put this back here. Where did it go? There we go. Because, I mean, they like mud, right? I guess we should not deny them that. We'll just kind of sink it, like, back into this. I think that's okay. As long as they don't glitch through that, which I, I really don't think they will... And then we've got to move this somewhere. Lord, this is for, and I'm sure that I talked about it in the time lapse already, but this is going to have a part two. I guess I'll just put it, I hate that. I don't like that at all. Uh, maybe I move, okay, you know what? No, this, they're going to, to live with this for the time being. And when I say they, I 100% mean me is going to live with it until the next episode when we finish this exhibit. Let me see what their um, enrichment is. So they need food specifically now. Um, oh, and they have an interspecies bonus with the red river hog. And I know that I, I probably mentioned that in the voiceover already, um, but I haven't, or I haven't recorded that yet. Yeah, I haven't recorded that yet. Um, so if I have, I, I apologize, but let me know if you think we should go ahead and throw our red river hogs in here, um, maybe expand the land a little bit more, maybe out to here a little bit. We can use up this area. Um, but yeah, because they have an interspecies bonus and that would obviously give them uh, a higher rating here. So yeah, let me know. But there we go. Now their welfare is 70%, which is not fantastic. And I don't necessarily love that. Because if one little thing goes wrong, oh god, you're not escaping, are you? Oh, you are escaping. <laughs> As I say, if one little thing goes wrong, uh, it's all over for us. So let's block this up uh, so that they do not escape and move the barrier. Um, because I clearly am 100% prepared to open this exhibit and start playing the game. I am a professional. Thank you very much. Um, let's move this over to here. We'll add a space in the middle of this. Bring that uh, apparently just to there because I can't bring it any more with the way that is. Um, and then will this let me change it it will. Okay. I'm going to do that just for now. I actually don't necessarily hate that, but that way he cannot escape because he was making a beeline for that. And okay. I was like, thank you, sir. I, uh, I did put a barrier there. Are you going to, 
What are you gonna do? You cannot escape. You cannot escape. Hank, by the way, this is what his name is going to be. I did get many, many name suggestions uh, for a lot of animals. So that's what we're gonna do right now after this. But this is Hank, uh, by the way, uh, because I did get a name suggestion uh, for a warthog, but I love it so much that I wanted, I wanted our pygmy hippo to be named Hank. There's just something about it. Just Hank the tank, the little pygmy hippo guy. I love it so much. Um, so yeah, so there we go. We have our pygmy hippos. Let's move on to naming before I make this episode like two hours long. We're going to go over to warthogs. Now I did get a suggestion for a, you know, tried and true uh, classic, which is actually funny with this uh, warthog's name being Musa. It reminds me of Mufasa, which the name suggestion was Pumbaa, which is obviously just perfect. I know it is a very um, like obvious name, but Lion King is actually my favorite Disney movie, if you didn't know that. And so I, I gotta love it. Somebody suggested it, so we're gonna use it. Oh, and I need to... Remember your labeling, Savannah. Okay, and then for the baby albino warthog, which I know I haven't really shown off yet, or did I? I'm recording this, as I'm sure I talked about in the voiceover, in uh, so far apart that I can't really remember what I talked about or not. But our little baby warthog, our little albino guy, uh, Sky, is going to be the name uh, for our albino warthog. There we go. I love it. And then we also got, I'm going to pause this so chaos doesn't ensue. Also, this is already chaos. My word. Uh, we're going to go over here and grab a meerkat. The very first one I see that hopefully a male right here. This is a male. This is going to be Jimmy. Don't know why. Somebody thought it would sound funny. So there we go. We have Jimmy, our male, uh, what is he? Meerkat? And then we also had, where is our baby aardvark? Or did our baby aardvark already grow up? That's nosy. That's our male. Is the baby one out here? Um, I guess we don't. Did we even have a baby? Am I going crazy? I'm going to name this one uh, Nova. That was the suggestion. And I love it. It's very cute. So this is Nova. Beautiful. Label that correctly. And then last but not least, I loved this suggestion. We're going to go over here and see if there's any flamingos that need a name. And if not, I might hold on to this one, which we had a lot of flamingos. So, aha, here we go. This one, the all important, I'm fine. Leave me alone. Stop protesting. I'm fine. <laughs> I love it. Uh, additionally, uh, on that topic, I do not know why my brain buffered so much, so hard, but what we could 100% do is we could take this barrier, line it up completely, and turn this into one-way glass behind the logs here. Uh, one-way glass, right? Yeah, like that. And then... We hopefully can't see it, but it serves the same purpose in that they can't see through it. The flamingos, I mean. So I might have to play around with that on the other exhibit as well. But if you can see here, like we can kind of barely see it right there. But I think I'm okay with that if it works, to be honest. Um, and so I might play around with that over here as well, just on this side. So that way, maybe we can take away some of this, too, because I really do hate how much these red crown cranes are blocked off and people can't see them. So let's see, where does this barrier go? It's right here and then right there. I always have a hard time, like, focusing on where the heck these barriers even are. And then if we do one-way glass for this and raise this 
up. Is that facing the right way? Okay. And then hide this more in the logs. And again, I don't know why I didn't think about this myself. I'm a little embarrassed that I didn't remember that this was a possibility in a thing. Uh, let's see if we do something like that. Uh, how it goes. Because now they can't view them. Oh, I guess, you know, I guess I should continue it here as well. Because I forgot that we extended this exhibit over to here. So if I just hide this one and this one and do one-way glass on this as well, raise it up, I'll fix the other side. Um, this one needs to lower. hate working with actual barriers. Um, okay. That should block off this entire side. So they have this corner to go hide and run away. Do I hear protesters? No. Okay, great. All right, we have a gift. Uh, we have adopt a habitat species. We 100% did that. Thank you very much. We have vet research complete, which we need to get somebody going on our pygmy. Oh, no, we don't because of Tolly Zoo. I forget how this game works. <laughs> we don't need to have somebody researching because of Tolly Zoo, but we do need somebody to research the Siamings. I didn't realize that we didn't have anything researched for them. Oh, we're going to have a baby crown, red crowned crane. We never get to catch this. So let's hang out and look. <gasps> look, it's so cute. Nope, come back. Oh, was there two? Oh, we're about to have too many. But look at the fuzzy. It's so cute. I love it. It's a, what are you? It's a girl. It's a girl and it has... <gasps> Not bad genes. That's actually pretty good. What about you? Man, eh, not so great. Your uh, your sister's better. Let's label this one as a female to keep. Uh, we might have to put her in the trade center when she grows up just so that we can get a male that she's not related to. Because, you know, we don't want to breed her with her dad. Uh, but let me know name suggestions for that special little girl. Because that's actually pretty good. Oh, work zones. You guys, this, <laughs> this game, uh, I need to actually play it. Okay. Work zone. Anyway, special name for that special little girl. Cause that is pretty good genetics for just like a random breeding. You know, like we, we bred that animal work zones. I know what I'm doing. New work zone I want to make. Um, and I actually think I now want to put these all in one work zone and I want to name it the af can I not hello is that does that make a work zone? it does okay apparently I'll name it here I want to name it what do I want to name it um Africa one I think exhibit that way I know what it is. Exhibit. Okay. And then which... It's this one, right? Yeah, I don't want you in that one. So this, the Africa entrance, is this. Which doesn't really make sense anymore. So maybe we do like Africa small animal. Look at how stupid these exhibits look. They're shapes. Because of how much space we have to give them behind the scenes. Uh, okay. And then I think I want to, it would make sense to put facilities like here. You know what? Mm, okay. I changed my mind. What I want to do is I want to keep uh, the Africa entrance exhibits. I want to keep as these two. Because that's closer to here. Yes. Uh, and then what I want to do for Africa 1 is we'll add more to it, but nothing but this one for now. Which means we just need to get a facility. We need a keeper hut. Uh, this episode's going to be like a million years long. Watch. Okay. Keeper hut. 
there, which is inside power. So that works. And then let's do a staff room because we can. What the heck is a staff room symbol? There we go. Put that there. Okay. So then that means these guys can be edit in there. And then <laughs> if we go to keepers, which I passed, where the heck are my keepers? Aha. Uh, everybody's assigned. Okay, great. So let's just grab two more knowing that eventually we're going to add more uh, to this work zone. But if we, can I not have you until you land on the ground? Okay, now can I click you? Because I have to pay you less and I have to assign you to stuff. Uh, training? No. Work zone. Right here. Africa 1. And then you. Oh, you know what? If I get smart, we should totally color code these guys. So that I know who is who by walking around. Okay. Habitat cleanliness. They made this messy really fast. Really, really fast. So... I think that settles all of our issues for today. We don't need a quarantine. Uh, can't find accessible research center. I really, I can't be bothered. You need to figure yourself out. Next episode, I, why are we viewing from all the way back here? I make this beautiful underwater viewing and not these guys are coming down here. God, so dumb. Anyway. Uh, yeah, next episode, uh, landscaping and maybe working more on this viewing area over here. Cause this is kind of sad looking. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with how this is coming out so far. I love this little Africa, like this plaza here. This obviously could have been made a little bit bigger, but again, I'm hoping more animals spread everybody out. Um, maybe that's wishful thinking and maybe I should preemptively make this a little bigger since we... We currently have room to extend the path and I probably should, huh? I also probably should have made this a little bit thicker. I should just start building with 10 meter paths just all the time. Like just no questions asked. Oh, water filtration. Did I do that? I don't think so. Uh, water, water. Did I? I did not. Good job. I know how to play the game beautiful okay now we have that okay yeah i think that's where i'm gonna leave it i have no idea how long this episode uh ended up being so if you watched the entire thing and made it this far thank you so much uh, i'm really enjoying getting back into the game again after being so sick again i talked about that in the voiceover next episode will be coming very very soon and i think we might do a little bit of a maintenance episode just to get rewrapped around like who our animals are breeding relationships you know stuff like that so yeah thank you so much for watching leave a like leave a comment hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content and i will see you in the next video bye